English the a genetical blue. And why is that? Because uh, it's the color of Asian, supposedly. You know, the color of the sea, when the sky is nice and blue and the sea gets blue, it's the blue of Asian. They call it the genetical blue. Does it look it's too dark, isn't it, for a genetical blue? I don't know. Is the sea that dark? Maybe it is. On the Greek island of Aegina, just an hour boat ride away from Athens, Moises Kostis contemplates and records his memoirs. In this peaceful getaway, he recalls his life as a Jewish child, born at the outbreak of World War II, when his chances of survival were nil. Migration of birds, migration of animals. He said these are uh, two million uh, birds are flying. And you see two million birds. And you say there were six million people dying, you know. Can you imagine how many people were this? You see this building, you don't see the sky. You see the migration of uh, this uh, weather beast traveling, you know. To three and a half million weather beast. You see a field endless. You don't see the end of it. And this is only half of what Jewish people were killed. Unbelievable, eh? Every time I see this kind of thing, get me, you know. Some memories never go away. They don't even diminish with time. And the more time that passes, the more it seems unbelievable that something like that took place right in your own neighborhood. To your family members, hunted, captured, and sent away to a place of no return, you're reminded of their existence in the faded photo still displayed. We are the next generation, those born after the war in 1948, who seek the answers from the other children, the hidden ones. We want to know what happened to the generation of the lost children, born a few years before us, those captured and those who survived, those killed in a distant place, and those who are the eyewitness to what happened at that horrible time called the Great War. The Great War, when genocide was implemented immediately and targeted the children, and how a few escaped the Gestapo roundups in their communities by the righteous ones who hid them, while their extended families were captured and dispersed in the void. This is the story of a five-year-old child, Moises Costis, who along with the sister Hannah and mother went into hiding and managed against all odds to survive the roundup of all the Jews in Greece. I don't know how the biggest percentage of loss in uh, Europe was here in Greece. You know that? 90 some percent. So the two percent that are left, wait, how many people do you think they are? It's me that I don't know anything. Where's my mother, and where's your mother, and was another one, and there were 10 people, and that's it. And Heim family. And I, what, what do you think was left? There was a time called before the war, when life was good and peaceful and productive. There was a life that should have been part of a normal childhood in Athens, but it exists only in the imaginary world of Moise's journals. There was a time when the Athenian Jewish families prospered and lived harmoniously and peacefully with their neighbors. For generations, the Athenian Jews had lived in the foothills of the Acropolis, an ancient place where there existed a synagogue in ancient times. Even St. Paul, hearing about the ancient Athenian Jewish community, came to preach and attract new converts. 
And so the Jewish communities around ancient Greece continue to thrive, prosper, and live peacefully through centuries of coexistence. The young Jewish generation of the 1930s had established a thriving youth group that offered cultural and traditional celebrations from their rich heritage. All the Jewish houses were close to the temple. Yeah. That's why a lot of Jewish people live in this year. Right. And the, and the neighbors which are around are so Right. Okay, you go down to the city. Mm -hmm. This is all. The Jewish community of Athens had a mixture of Sephardic Jews from the 1492 expulsion of the Spanish Inquisition, and Romagnotti Jews, or Roman Jews, those who could trace their lineage to ancient Jerusalem. And there were even two Jewish temples right across from each other, servicing each of those distinct groups. Born in 1939 in Thysion, in the Acropolis area of Athens, Greece, Moise spent his early years in the shadow of the upcoming war. As the Germans conquered and occupied the European nations, thousands were herded into ghettos. And it was only a matter of time that the conquering Germans would occupy Greece and begin their plan to hunt capture and murder all the Jews of Greece, just like they had the remaining Jews of Europe. A shocked nation listened in disbelief that Germany had conquered their beloved land. Prosochi, o radiofonikos tathmos Athenon, ύστερα από λίγο δεν θα είναι ελληνικός, θα είναι γερμανικός, και θα μεταδίδει ψέματα. Έλληνες, μην τον ακούτε. Ο πόλεμός μας συνεχίζεται και θα συνεχιστεί μέχρι της τελικής νίκης. Ζήτω το έθνος των Ελλήνων. Using different strategies to annihilate the Jews of Greece, the Germans rounded up the Jews from their homes, their cities, villages, islands, and anywhere they could be hunted. Athenian Jews were forced to register at their own synagogue for the weekly attendance. Unregistered Jews were shot, and those who could fled into the unknown, only to be turned in by German collaborators. As the final solution unfolded, Salonika, with a population of 54,000 Jews, would be the first target. The Salonika Jewish community, diverse, successful, and well-established since their expulsion from Spain 500 years earlier, was about to be annihilated. Their homes, businesses, possessions, and treasures were stolen while they boarded car trains to their final destination, Auschwitz. By feeding their victims lies about relocation, the Salonican Jews went peacefully to the waiting trains. Since we heard that what happened in the Saloniki, said it's the same thing. Oh, nothing happened to Saloniki. They just gather them together. They go to work in Germany for a, a day, and they will send them back. That was the message, you know, they need their working hands. That's the message. He said, it's, uh, it's, it's okay. Maybe they will send us, he said, over here too. There are some factories to work for the... the I mean, this is what they told them and they believed them, you know. They believed them. As they believed them, you know, you're going to take a shower. Leave your clothing here and make sure you remember where you put them. 
so you don't get that big stuff. You will take a shower in the next room, and then you will be back again. I mean, why they would believe them? Can you tell me? On March 25, 1944, the Jews of Athens were rounded up in a sting operation and captured in their own temple. Some managed to flee, but others were turned in by local collaborators. Over one million children were murdered during the Holocaust. From Greece alone, almost 10,000 children were sent to Auschwitz, where they met their final death. The lucky ones, survivors, are known as the hidden children, those that endured the loss of their entire families as they were shuffled from one hiding place to another, always at the edge of death. Those still alive today recall those harrowing years with stories of miraculous survivals, stories of sudden flight and loss of family, stories of the unending struggle to survive for one more day. Our neighborhood, Tision, had a large Jewish presence, but after the roundup, mothers with young children, like Esther Costis, were either caught or try to save their children by going into hiding. She had Hannah and me, and she had to find a place to sleep. Who is going to take us in? Where everybody was afraid if they find uh, Jewish people in your home. So nobody wanted to take you in. So we'll go to abandoned houses, abandoned uh, wagons, railroad stations, that the wagons were abandoned on the side there and we we'll go in there to sleep for the night. As the Greek nation succumbed to the ensuing massacre of entire villages, the Jewish population was either captured or was on the run. Life changed overnight homes abandoned and taken over by strangers, families separated, captured, lost, children hidden in safe homes, leaving just memories of a peaceful life now up in flames. And just as countless Nazi war criminals went unpunished, so didn't Greek Nazi collaborators who resumed normal lives after the war, some even living in the same neighborhoods of the people whose families they had betrayed. And I was living actually under uh, Mihalis, my friend's house. And I told him, I said, Mihalis, I want to, where is he? Where is this, this short, ugly man? He said, I want to, to see him, to ask him, what the hell you were doing during the war? But I never had the opportunity. He said, he's very uh, aggressive. He said, you better not start with him. He said, because you will never hear the I said, I don't care if I hear from him, if I don't hear. I want to know what the hell he was doing. But I never had the opportunity, and I still hold it with me. I think I'm going to take this as a clay. You know the things that you take with you? That's one of the things, you know, that I never found him to talk to him, you know, to ask him, the bastardo, what the hell is all about? What is it with you? What kind of a person are you? That you live now in peace and you go to at night and you sleep and you have given the Gestapo 50 people. What, what, is, what is with you? It's no secret that without the support of local governments like the Vichy in France, the Nazi plan of the elimination of the entire Jewish race could not have been achieved. But in some countries like Greece, their guilt 
lay in their silence. It happened at this time, and nobody complained, nobody said anything. And you have the Colopapades in, in Rome apologizing now. Yeah, we knew something about it, but uh, we didn't do it. But now you're saying it. And I'm sorry. This sorry, Rufiane. Oh, Papas, Geek again. Oh, yeah. We, we knew more than that. Uh, nobody went out to help the Jewish people. Nobody, eh? Historically, the genocide goal is to wipe out the entire race and children being the first targets. Children to start asking conversation afterwards for something. Everybody out, like mafia, you know, the whole family goes. Not that uh, you leave one child to come later and say, hey, you killed my parents now, I won't. No, everybody out. It's a system, you know, it's a system, a whole system. Somebody plan it, somebody work on it, and it did take place. Unbelievable, though, that the world, this is what is amazing to me. The Germans needed labor and needed money, okay. They found this way. But the whole world, not to say something, hey, what are you doing? What is this? The smell from the burning of bodies were going all over. Bulgaria, all over Germany. What, nobody knew that they say that? What are you burning? In Mark Mazower's book, The Horrifying Story of the Jews of Salonika, recounts the roundup of all the Jews who were told that they were being relocated and were even sold round-trip tickets. Auschwitz. Oh, don't, don't know anything. Did you see anything? No, 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 I didn't see anything. Did you hear it? Nothing, nothing, nothing. Did you hear nothing? Papa never heard, never see anything, never nothing. People were taken from their homes with their belongings and their things to the trains. They didn't know anything about anything. But as they were complicit criminals, there were also the few and righteous who need to be acknowledged. In Athens, the Archbishop issued a policy of providing false IDs for all the Jews trying to hide, with a fake Christian name and the virtuous and willing Greeks risking their own lives to save them, a few Jews did survive. And then you have one person that saved some people, saved us, saved you, saved somebody else, your mother, and then you say, well, there is one person here and one person there. But is this enough to talk about the whole country? This is not enough, one person here and one person there. The whole country was against the Jews. They, they did, not only they didn't help, if they knew that there is a Jewish person there, they would go in and point it out to the Germans. Here, there is there. There were people doing this as a living. This was their job. To go in the neighborhood to uh, uh, discover where the Jewish people hide. If you would see a new person in the new neighborhood, right away they would go to us. Where are you coming from? Who are you? What are you doing? Is this, this, is this, that? If there was a question, oh, they said. As the Jewish neighbors abandoned their homes, they had to find shelter in places where they could become invisible. In the village of Lhosa, 10 kilometers from Athens, Moises hid with his family with an elderly couple. The rule was get them out of here, to get their homes, to get their furniture, to get anything that Jewish people had. That was the, the whole idea in these neighborhoods that I was. In the northern neighborhoods, in the rich neighborhoods up in Kipisya, I didn't know. But in our neighborhood, that was the case. They knew Jewish people had a lot of gold, 
a lot of uh, money, and they were stealing it. And they tried to use uh, uh, the slaves. They need the slaves in Germany. Who is going to work in the factories? Who made the Volkswagen? And who made the this? And who made free labor? Free labor. You imagine free labor? Who can have free labor? They did. This is what I think that happened. It was economics. They wanted free hands, and on the other hand, they wanted to steal from all the millions of people what gold and what diamonds they stole. It's uh, unheard of. Nobody even knows. All of a sudden, somebody appears in uh, Brazil, and it's a millionaire. How did you get? Who, who are you? He said, I'm the son of uh, the, the, my grandfather was uh, uh, in the German uh, army. Well, you know what happened, but how are you going to prove anything now? Well, this is my diamond, you will say. People don't even exist. And I wonder what happened to all these German people and the soldiers that returned to Germany after the they withdraw. They went, they went to Germany. Where, where were these people? What happened to them? Nobody knows anything about them. They were young people there. They were 16, 17, 20 years old. They returned to, to Germany. So what happened after the war? What have you left them there to, to work? Or were they were murderers. Nobody bothered them because they were taking orders. And there are 50,000 people inside the trains. And nobody can take the gun and kill the bastards there. I can't believe this. You believe this? And people were dying because they were standing like animals. They packed them so that they were staying. The one was leaning on the other. You couldn't even fall down. You couldn't. See people dying and they were standing. And then every so often in Yugoslavia, they will stop, open the day, take the dead out, throw them into the continue. Take a check, do something at the hour. No, nothing, nothing. Yakova is going to save them. During the German occupation, some 1,300 Jews joined the Greek partisans and took part in guerrilla warfare against the occupier. And in the Greek army, 12,000 Jews served their country including a hero, Mordechai Fritzes. What happened to the surviving children of the Holocaust is the next challenging chapter. Those who lost their entire families had to live in orphanages or camps for the displaced. Others ended up in the newly created State of Israel in 1948, entering the army of old enough to fight and defending their country against their neighbors. And then there were the handful, like Moises, too young to emigrate in 1945, and whose families tried to pick up shattered lives by remaining in Greece without their loved ones and without an identity. I remember going with uh, my father to the synagogue. It was uh, barely empty, empty. It wasn't people. There was nobody there. They had troubles. Starting the ceremony, you have to have 10 people for Minyan to start the ceremony. If you don't have people, you cannot start. So they didn't have 10 people. Now you can imagine what you're talking about. It was gone. The people were gone. Where are you going to talk to? to who? In an attempt to build new lives, both Hannah and Moises would leave for Israel, where each got married and began the next chapter of their lives. And years later, after retiring from a successful art career in the U.S., Moisik decided to resume his quiet, forgotten life in Greece. But could he? Look at this picture. Who, who, who am I? This, this where, where am I coming from? Are you a man without a home? I'm a person without a home. If you ask me, and they do ask me where you are from, 
I say I'm really from nowhere. Nowhere. And that is the truth. I don't feel here at home. In America, I felt a little bit more home, but not real home, because I was also a visitor. In Israel, I was welcome. I felt good, but it's not my home. You know, I never done anything. Home is uh, more than more than the language, more than the customs, more than the the growing up in a neighborhood, in the school. In the, there is a lot to make a home. And here, it's partly home because the people didn't let you forget that you are not part of the society. Never. Never. with a, a, like a collage, she makes collage eggs. You sure, see sure. Her, her color? Yeah. This is a little boy that is very unhappy sitting Why? all along, and they left him, you know. Today, living a creative but solitary life on Egina, Moises enjoys frequent visits from his immediate family. Kala, poly kala. Poly kala. You have a glass there. This is for you. I have you. You always take somewhere now because it's good for the heart a little bit. It is good, yeah. Yeah, a little bit good for the heart. Sitting in cafes by the sea, we're all spellbound by Moisey stories, insights, and new versions of Greek mythology. Delivered with his classic sense of humor, even explaining the origin of all the evils of the world released from Pandora's box takes on a new life. Because he knew that the woman is curious to know what about things. Because she wanted to create a problem between her and her husband, Aphrodite, the other one. She didn't like her. She didn't so, like Pandora. Yes, yeah, so she God. gave her the Pandora box and told the, her husband, Ephesus, Tell her not to open it. What is to tell her not to open it? It's like tell her open it, you know? So she was looking at it one day, the next day, so the girl the next day, she opened it. And then these are for everyone in the world? Out all the bad things, all the evil came out. How did they put it in the box the first, in the first place? Aphrodite put it. How did she get them? Yeah, she's a goddess. She can do anything she likes. Before that, it wasn't any bad at all. In the world? In the world. Only from the back. It's from the so mythology. Created them. It's a nice story. It's mythology. Don't find... It was time for me to leave Egina. My annual reunion with Moises was over, and the stories he shared would give me a lot to think about. Did I get all the answers? No. But there's always next year at his getaway home in Egina on the deep blue Mediterranean Sea. Τώρα που παίρνεις βίντεο, παίρνεις τώρα, τι παίρνεις. Ναι, μπορείς να πεις ό,τι θέλεις. Τι είναι, δεν λέω τώρα. Τώρα θα βρει με μου.